Released in 1998, Godsmack's first album was originally self-released under the title All Wound Up until the band signed a major recording deal to Universal and Republic Records. They would soon re-release the record as a self-titled album. Gracing the cover was a mysterious pierced woman along with a logo that I always thought shared some similarities with Alice in Chains. Not to mention the band's name Godsmack, which is a track taken off Alice in Chains' hugely popular 1992 album Dirt. I found it funny when Godsmack drummer Shannon Larkin claimed the band were not influenced by Alice in Chains, saying they were not clones, telling the Reno Gazette Journal, I don't hear it, I was never a big Alice in Chains fan. Lane's voice is amazing, but I never heard it. If somebody said Godsmack sounds like Metallica, I could totally hear that. Sully sounds like James Hetfield to me. I guess there's a darkness to the harmonies that sound like Lane and Jerry, but to me it's apples and oranges, he would say. Anyways, getting back to the story, who is the woman on the cover? Was she real, and if so, what is she up to today? That's what we're going to explore in today's video, along with a controversy involving the album, and a disgruntled parent, and a story I've previously done in Godsmack in case you guys have missed it. The woman on Godsmack's debut album is a real person. Her name is Toni Tiller, and she would be interviewed by Kerrang! magazine, where she discussed how she got on the cover of the record, and what she's up to today. She would admit to meeting the members of the band years after the photo shoot took place and how nice they were to her. She would tell Kerrang that she graced the album cover recalling, I was living in New York City and deeply involved in the club kids scene and so I had an interesting look going. I met a photographer in Brooklyn and we were trying a few things out for a project of his. A few years later he was working with the band and they saw that in his book and liked it. So they purchased it for use. The next thing I know, my face is everywhere. It was pretty strange, but I love weird stuff like that, she'd recall. That image of Taylor was actually taken four years prior to their debut album coming out in 1994. Taylor would admit that she wasn't a model and would help people out if they asked, also admitting that one woman in New York made a doll of her. Surprisingly, she would admit that being on the album cover never got her recognized in public, largely because of geography. She would tell Kerrang that there weren't a lot of Godsmack fans where she lived at the time, you're probably asking, what is she up to today? Well, she would admit to Krang, now I live in the woods, I'm bald, usually barefoot, and into a variety of stuff. Meditation, strange objects, cooking, esoteric studies, cacti, dollhouses, rugs, and artsy crap. My spare time, I have a reform school for rude kittens. Since doing the interview with Krang, she's also posted some photos showing her signing posters for fans of the band's debut album. Let's talk about the controversy behind the record. Released in August of 1998, Godsmack's debut record didn't really create any trouble for almost a year. Then in April of 1999, the album was certified gold in America, moving half a million copies. Fast forward to June of that year, and MTV reported that one, I'm not kidding, one parent from Cleveland had bought the record for his kid, and after going through the liner notes and lyrics, complained about the record citing objectionable artwork and lyrics. The artwork they objected to were pentagrams. The album hadn't been released with a parental advisory sticker and somehow made its way past the people who review albums for Walmart and Kmart. Both those chains didn't sell records at the time that had parental advisory stickers. The complaint resulted in the chains pulling the albums off store shelves and eventually the band agreed to and put parental advisory stickers on the record with frontman Sally Erna telling Rolling Stone, our record has been in the marketplace for more than a year now without a parental advisory sticker and this is the one and only complaint. Stickers and lyrics are by nature subjective. We decided to put a sticker on the record. It's almost taunting kids to go out and get the record to see what we're saying. Erna would claim that the controversy didn't hurt album sales and he was probably right as it would go four times platinum in America. Let's talk now about the feud between Godsmack and Motley Crue that happened when the bands toured together in the 2000s. For the past decade or so, we've seen a war of words exchange between Godsmack frontman Sully Erna and Molly Crew bassist Nikki Six. In fact, the whole feud dates back to 2009 when Godsmack was on tour with Molly Crew as part of Crew Fest 2. And here's an interview with Sully Erna shortly after the tour where he slammed Molly Crew's diva behavior. I'll we'll tell you, it's been the most dramatic tour we've ever been on. I mean, talk about just. <laughs> Just craziness, man. Sometimes egos run high, man, and, and there has definitely been some rock star garbage on this tour that we just have never seen in our career. Every band, from Black Sabbath to Aerosmith, Rush, Metallica, you name it, we've, they've always, like, 
I don't think there was ever a threat, you know what I mean? Like, who's gonna dwarf Metallica anyways? But there's always just been this mutual kind of like, we want to put on a great show. So bring your bells and whistles, bring your show. So between you guys and us, we can, you know, make these people get a bang for their buck. And that's really what entertainment has always been about. Um, and so I've never been in a position before where we felt we had to really protect this thing, you know? It's kind of like a dog with a bone, man. It's like you put us in, like, up against the wall, we're going to come out swinging. We asked Godsmack shoot from the hip vocalist if Motley Crue might have been acting out of ego competition between Crue Fest fans or living up to previous traveling tours like Ozfest. I don't know who needs to live up to whose reputations, and I don't know why some people consider music as a competition. But um, I will tell you that I have never been in a situation where I felt like I was out for blood, you know? And, and honestly, this was the first time that I felt like, you know what? If there's going to be some people that are going to treat other people a certain way, then I'm going to go out there every night and f***ing crush you on stage, make sure that we make you look old and fat, and go home with a nice big fat paycheck. And you can sit in your world, and I'll sit in mine, and see you at the top again I guess somewhere I don't know I mean all I care about really is playing music and enjoying myself on the road I'm not here to compete you know now it will come out shortly afterwards that Erna's comments were aimed directly at Molly Crew bassist Nikki Six and here's Six responding to the comments I had a great time um, what was God, that? the singer in, in Godsmack was complaining about about me basically they say they say he wrote a song about me but he's never confirmed about it, so we would just be gossiping, you know, so I don't know if it's true. But I guess they had a bad time on the tour. So, you know, f them. Now in 2011, Godsmack drummer Shannon Larkin revealed whether the song that the band wrote called Crying Like an Expletive was aimed specifically about Nikki Six. He revealed that the song was written actually about Philip Rivers from the San Diego Chargers, who cried after a game loss. And he would also take the opportunity to clear up the air on exactly what happened behind the scenes on the Crew Fest 2 tour, saying coming off that Crew tour, Sully had some issues with Nikki. Most of it stemmed from Molly Crew's security more than Nikki, but Nikki is the leader of the band. Basically, the security threw us off the stage. Whatever it was, it was a bunch of ego stuff that none of us really got into. He'd go on to say Molly Crew's security were real weird with our guests getting backstage, like our guests might want to look at Molly Crew. Our guests were there to see us and they didn't give a crap about Molly Crew. And Molly Crew is a legendary band that we all respect. When I was 17, I had Shout at the Devil, but it just kind of fronted us a little bit that they would think that our guests would be starstruck over them. So that's where the bad blood came from. As to where all the recent animosity is coming from, Larkin pointed out that Sully runs his mouth and Nikki runs his mouth. They're both big rock stars. Next thing you know, it's a battle in the press. He'd conclude by saying that the Crew Fest 2 tour was a fantastic tour. Now by May of 2014, things didn't really seem to be improving between the camps, as Nikki Six would say on his radio show Six Sense that Molly Crew would turn down the opportunity to headline US festivals if Godsmack was on the same bill. And later that year, during an interview with a radio station in Cincinnati, Erna was asked about how he felt about Nikki Six being forced to play Godsmack's music because the band was on top of the rock charts, and Erna responded by saying, The one thing I'll never give the guy is the kind of cheap publicity that he's looking for. He'd go on to say, I don't do media wars. If he has something to say, he can come say it to my face. If he has a problem, he can come see me. He continued by saying, this isn't going to be anything for publicity. I'm not going to give him that. He's on the downslide of his career and I'm not just going to do it. And the feud would extend one year further into 2015 and into its sixth year when Erna appeared on the Jamie Jasta podcast, stating that Six was an old, fat, washed up husband who treats people like crap. And Molly Crew bassist Nikki Six would have the final say when he called Sully Erna a baby in response to the comments a few days later. It seemed like by 2015 things had finally subsided and there was no longer a war of words exchanged between the camps. Who knows whether we'll see both bands share the stage again. That concludes today's video guys. Let me know your thoughts on Godsmack and Molly Crew, and who do you think would win in a fight? Nikki Six or Sully Erna? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you have suggestions for future topics, let me know in the down below as well. Take care.